Just a girl in the... Hey, Andrew here. I love No Doubt. Have you ever heard of them? should definitely check them out. Fantastic. Today, I would like to teach you long division of polynomials. Let's take a look at this example. So we got 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 15, all being divided by x plus 3. So first thing is what I want to do is reorganize this into a long division problem. Bam. So to set up this long division, what we're going to do is we're going to take this divisor, which is to the left of that, no, which is my left and right? This is my right. So that's to the right of the division symbol. We're going to take that anyway and plug it on in outside of the long division symbol there. Okay. And this term known as the dividend gets plugged inside of that long division symbol. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at our divisor. We're going to locate the term with the highest power of x in it. That's pretty simple because there's only one term that has x in it. And we're going to take that and divide it now into the term here that has the highest power of x in your dividend. And it happens to be that term. And we're going to do that division on the side. So do 2x cubed all over now just x. Right? It's 1x, but who cares? That x goes by by that 3 reduces down to a 2. So now you're left with 2x squared. That is the quotient, okay? And you're going to plug in the quotient here above that long division symbol. So this is going to be 2x squared. Where should you place it? It doesn't matter. Just place it on the top. If it's here, or it's here, or it's here, or it's here, it doesn't make a difference. All right? Now what you're going to do is set up your... Uh, math down here. So you're going to have a subtraction symbol there and you're going to have parentheses. Okay. Now take this term. I'm going to get rid of the one because it's distracting. And we're going to take this and distribute it now to each term in your divisor. Okay. So 2x squared multiplied by x is going to be now 2x cubed. If you did this right, they both should match. And then you're going to take 2x squared and multiply it by positive 3. So that's going to be now positive 6x squared. There's no other terms left here in the divisor. So therefore just plug in your zeros. Okay. Now, take this negative symbol and distribute it to each term inside of your parentheses. Okay? So everywhere there's a positive, turn it into a negative, and everywhere there's a negative, turn it into a positive. So there are no negatives, right? So they're all going to become negative. They were all positive, right? So we're going to make them all negatives. And now just add common terms. So they cancel. These you can add because they have the same base, right? That is, believe it or not, that is a 2. It is not, what does that even look like? No. Anyway, um, so just add these two together, subtract them, right? So it's going to be negative 6 plus a 3, so that's going to be a negative 3x squared. Okay, negative 3x squared. And then you're going to do that negative 4x plus now 15. Okay, now where do you go from here? So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the same process. You're going to look at the x value here, and you're going to divide it on into the high, the term with the highest x powered, uh, the highest power of x. The term with the highest power of x. Sometimes I can't figure out what I'm trying to say. You ever have that happen to you, right? Where your brain like literally just like locks up, like breaks on a car or something. Yep, yep, yep. So the x's cancel here. You're left with now three negative three x. Okay. So this negative really becomes a subtraction sign. So that's uh, going to be the next term of your quotient. So it's going to be negative 3x. Now you're going to do the same process. Negative symbol or minus sign, subtraction symbol, whatever you want to call it, in your parentheses. Take this, including the negative sign, and distribute it now to each of those terms. Okay. So the first one you're going to get when you do the first, it's going to be negative 3x squared. And if you did it right, guess what? They should work out to be the same, right? Including the signs. And then take the negative 3x, multiply it by positive 3, so that should be now a negative 9x. Since you have nothing left, just plug in a 0. Distribute this negative right to each of the terms. So since they're all negative inside of that, except for the 0, but honestly, who cares? Since they're all negative, you're going to turn them into positives, right? A little life advice for you here. Turn the negative into the positive, okay? Remember, things could always be worse. Could always be worse. So be happy and thankful for what you have. Add these two down together. I know it's a subtraction, but you're adding basically a positive and a negative term. So that's why it's a subtraction. So this is going to be now a positive 5x. And then this is just positive 15 because the zero doesn't do anything. Guess what you're going to do next? This is your new dividend. So you're going to take your x term in the divisor and divide it into the 5x now because that's the term with the highest power of x in it. You're going to now take that and do that division to find the quotient. Those x's cancel, and this is now the new term of the quotient. It is positive, right? If there's no sign there, it implies a positive. So plus 5. Guess what you're going to do?
subtraction symbol, parentheses, and do your distribution. So this times x first, so that's going to be 5x. If you did it right, they should match. And then 5 multiplied by the th by the 3. <laughs> Sorry, fly flew into my mouth. <coughs> Yeah. Anyway, that's going to be a positive 15. Okay. And uh, here we're going to take down that negative, and we're going to distribute it to each term inside of those parentheses. Okay. So this one, don't take this advice. Don't turn the positives into a negative. All right. But you have to for this problem. Don't do that in real life. And you're going to have no remainder. All right. Now, if you didn't have a zero down here, what you would do is you would take this number. And I mean, you could do it here, but it's a waste of time. You would take whatever's left now. There's no other terms left, so I'm done. Okay. Even if this was a six, I'd still be finished. And all you would do if it was a positive six, let's just say, you would write positive six over then this divisor x plus three. And then you would have been done. Okay. But this is not the answer. I'm just giving you a hypothetical. In any case, this now right here will represent the quotient. Okay. That is the quotient, ladies and gentlemen. So that's the answer. But you should always check your work, right? You should always try and check your work. So what I would suggest is doing a very quick check. Think about what we did, okay? Think about what we did. We took this term. We did 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 15. And that's all being divided now by the x plus 3. In other words, you took your dividend you divided it by your divisor, and that should equal now your quotient. I have a hard enough time learning this language. Could you imagine me learning a different language? Forget about it. I took seven years of Italian. Seven years, right? Or maybe eight. Who knows? I lost track. But seven years of Italian, I think I got ciao and come stai. Maybe arrivederci. Hmm? Yeah. Seven years. And that's all I got. It's embarrassing. Aren't you embarrassed? By the way, you ever watch Sebastian Maniscalco? <laughs> oh my God, Crack, absolutely. He's great. He's a fantastic comedian. And uh, if you haven't heard of him, definitely check him out if you have Netflix. If you don't have Netflix, check him out on YouTube. There's uh, plenty of free stuff. But I think you'll like it. He's great. Uh, anyway, Sanka. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, Sanka, right? <laughs> Oh, God. Okay. Focus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Focus. I, I just started thinking about his routine, and it's great. Anyway, what are you going to do now? Back to math. What are we doing? Are we doing math? Yeah, math. So what you're going to do now is you're basically going to make up any value you want for x. Now, there's one value of x you really don't want to use, okay? You don't want to use a negative 3, because if you plug in a negative 3 here, negative 3 plus 3 is going to be a 0, and that's going to be just undefined. So you can't use that. But any other number sh will be okay, right? Um, I'm going to choose an x value of 0 to make my life easier here. I would actually recommend you not doing that because certain times, you know, when you plug in 0, this term goes by by that, goes by by that, goes by by. It, it's nice because it everything simplifies nicely, but um, you might actually get these to balance out just by luck in a certain in certain cases um, and it not actually be right. Uh, you just got to be very careful. You just got to be careful. Anyway. Um, I'm going to do zero. So this is going to be two times zero cubed plus now three times zero squared minus then four times zero plus 15. All then divided by zero plus three. And that's then going to equal two times zero squared minus three times zero. That's a three. Yes. Three times zero. I know what you're thinking. You're like, what the hell is he writing? I don't even know half the time. That goes bye-bye, that goes bye-bye, that goes bye-bye, that goes bye-bye, that goes bye-bye. So what you're left with now is 15 over 3. Ooh, 15 over 3. That looks like a nice number, right? And you're left with 5 on this side. Yes, I know that's a 5. I don't. Even, what does that even look like? It almost looks like a, a T. It looks like a T S minus, right? <laughs> right? How, now I can't unsee a T S minus here. It's like, wait, is that a plus 5? I can't see T. I can't un. You ever have that happen to you? Right, where you look at something and you look at it in a different way and all of a sudden now you can't like undo. You ever play like one of those mind, uh, those image tricks? It's kind of amazing actually. Actually, it really is interesting, psychologically speaking, because it kind of gets at the heart at one of the shortcomings of the human mind. Because it's like once you see something a certain way, 
it's very, very difficult to unsee that perspective. You know, if you think about that now, how that might apply in the real world, you know, it has implications, you know, sociologically, um, politically. Once an idea gets planted, it's very hard to kind of unplant that idea. So you want to make sure you populate your mind with the right ideas, the right logic. Okay. Back to math. So 15 divided by three is what? Five. And does five equal five? Absolutely it does. So guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If this helped you out at all, like and subscribe. It means the world to us. We love all the comments we get to, all the great comments. It's amazing, the love and support that we're getting. Um, we really do love you guys. Thank you so very much for watching, for being a part of the community. We got thousands of videos out there too, not only math, but physics, chemistry. We solve specific problems. If you want to become a good problem solver, our channel is for you. If you're like, oh, I never know how to approach these problems. I always have trouble how to do... Guess what? We got your back. Okay? We got your back. Thousands of problems out there to help you through your class. We want to help you succeed. We look forward to helping you with more. Take care.